Good Bok Rabbi Isai. Ah! Lulu Nishmas, Mimi Ros, Mimi Ros, Mardachai. Welcome, all the guests. Instead of emails tonight, I want to introduce some of the chosh of guests that we have. Shalom Aleichem, what's your name? David Rosenberg, Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, Pennsylvania, Shalom Aleichem. Behind you we have, from Shavad HaKotel, right? Shalom Aleichem, what's your name again? Remind me your name. Josh Olga. Josh get over here, get over here, Josh. This is the real deal. All the way from Gaza, fighting in Gaza. Your friend also in Gaza? Not really. Some other friends are doing the Shalom Aleichem. So what, you do the daf every day there or not really? You try. try. You try. And when you miss a day, you continue wherever. Oh, beautiful. Tell us a good mindset. Tell us a story about the daf. Something about the, the daf. daf. What kind of mysterious uh, nefesh do you do for the daf? And if you don't have one, make it up right now. <laughs> um, I think I, I want to restart the daf in, in Gaza. And I said I would start on a new parak. And I had some of the sharing from WhatsApp download on my phone. And it was the exact Perak Shishi, the start of uh, um, Hakoinus. Beautiful. All right. So it's going okay over there? Everything, everybody safe? We need uh, a lot of tefillah. And I'll get more people to do the daf. That's right. Wow. All right. Surah's Toivos. All right. Who else do we have here? So what's your name? Kanan Devorn from Chicago. Wow. Very nice. Shalom Aleichem. Welcome. Landsman. Shalom what's your name? No, I'm Burek. Burek? From? New Milford, New Jersey. New Milford, What's your name? What? Norman. Norman? From? Gimel. Gimel. Who else? What's your name? I don't recognize you. Yitzhak Wagner. Yitzhak Wagner from? Dalin. Very nice. All right. Olive, base, Gimel. Anybody from base tonight here? We got Aleph, Gimel, and Dalit. Ariel is going to be in the next year. Our talking Yerushalayim show. What's your name? Lior Brenner. Lior Brenner from? In Efrat. Very nice. Shalom Aleichem. Okay. You? There's a lot of guests here. You're, you're a guest? Yeah, you're a guest. What's your name? Mayor Rosen. Oh. Why is he not a guest? Also from Scranton? Ah, that's what it is. Okay. But you grew up in Scranton. And Shalom Aleichem, all in the back. Adler. Adler? Adler. From? Melbourne, Australia. Woo! Melbourne, Australia. Givaldic. Okay. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. <coughs> We're going to go jump right into the sponsors. We have a shear coming up at 9.15, so don't worry. You'll be out of here by 9.15, guaranteed. Maybe. The Koyal of the Week is sponsored by Didya Pereria... Schus Shiduchim for three people. Schus Zivig Hogan Bekor of Chan Rocho Bas Michal, Chaim Dove Ben Shalamis, and Shishara Brocha Bas Shalamis. The Mesechta is sponsored for the unity of Am Yisrael. Person spent maybe $9,000 for Achtos of Klai Yisrael, without mentioning his name. Paras Achoydes, Yosef Ben Chai Yisrael, all the Schus in the cover from Sporting Limerat Torah, Paras Achoydes, Yididi Pereri. Again, the Schus Zivig Hogan Bekor of Chan Rocho Bas Michal, Chaim Dove Ben Shalamis. Shalamis, the Shoshana Brocha by Shalamis, the Parnas Achoydish, and the Koil of the Week. Parnas Achoydish, in honor of Rav Noam, Avi, Gary, and Yossi for your relentless commitment to MDY. There's people right now in the booth. Dave, what? Oh, Manchester's on. Wow, beautiful. Agudvach, Manchester Chabura, and everybody else that's on Zoom. Ben Bas Yosef, Paras Hayoim, Mordechai Sapaznik, the Zechanishmas, his great grandmother's Yorzai, Rebbe's and Rochel, Leah, Rabin, Mars Rochel, Leah, Bas, Reb Shimon, Zechron of Rocha, Zechron of Rocha, Mary Neshama, have an Aliyah, and she will be for my sister Rochel and all Rochel Leahs that are named after the entire Mishpach and all of Klai Yisrael, and Mordechai Sapaznik, she find the Shilch Bikarai. Baruch Berger and family, Lahaydois Lashem, to thank Hashem during an attack that tragically killed two fellow Chayalim. Hashem Yikam Damam, our son was miraculously unharmed. Hoydul Hashem Kitoiv, Kilo Elam Chazli, he was the first and only sponsor so far for the Hebrew Shir. So the Neshama should have an Aliyah and the Shevach Vaidot Hagesh Baruchu. Kamen Oppenheimer, Lili Nishmas, Yehudis Bas Mordechai Tzvi on her 17th yard site. 
And Rabbi Yisai, here we are, and Daphne Zayinam with Beis. Um, what? We'll just go back a little bit. Did we do that already? We did? Right. So, so we, we got to go a little, we'll go, we'll just do it real quickly. Nafla Ligina. It's like eight lines from the bottom. Nafla Ligina, Venehenes, Mishalab, Zmash, and Ahenes. So here's the case, Reboi Sai. This is, there's a number of cases. We have three cases. One is that there's a house above another house. It could be a Rosh Hashanah, it could be a house, it doesn't really matter. This one is Nechbata. What happened here? Take a look. This animal goes flying down and lands in a pile of vegetables and the pile of vegetables saves the fall. Says Rav, this halacha that you have to pay is only when the, the vegetables acted as a mattress. Avalachla, but if the animal ate, she doesn't have to pay at all. The owner doesn't have to pay if the animal ate. Perhaps Rav goes according to his own reasoning. We said by the poison, if somebody puts out poison and an animal comes by and eats, the animal shouldn't have eaten. So over here also, the owner could say, why did my animal eat? It's not my, it's not my problem that she ate. Hoi lo shalei toicha. Says the Gemara, it makes no sense. Amri. Hachi ashto. Hey, medoma rav hosom. Over there by the poison. Hoi lo shalei toicha. Lechad etaski hi. When she caused damage to herself, and you're trying to get money from the, the guy that put out the poison. The motzi hamalei mari de peri. So the owner of the fruit could say, I'm not paying you. Hoi lo shalei toicha. Who asked your animal to come by my house and eat my poison? La zuke hi achrine. But when it comes to damaging another person's fruit, eating somebody else's property, the Ptiri Shalumi Mi Omar, you're going to say a svara that she shouldn't have eaten, that's why you, the owner, don't have to pay? Chas Vishal. So here's a question. I'm not taking responsibility for this question. It's just L'Sabr Sa'izin to explain a uh, certain Allah that we're going to learn a little later on. It's brought down from the Chavetz Chaim in a uh, safer about the Chavetz Chaim, but I don't know how, how reliable it is. The question is like this. If a person is playing a ball with his kid and he, he slams the ball, home run, the adult hits a home run and it goes into his neighbor's window. So there's a svara to say, it's hard to understand, but just to... Understand the sugya coming up a little later. It's hard to say you don't have to pay at all. What would be the svar? Why? No, the adult hit the ball. The adult hit the ball. The svar is to say you don't have to pay at all. Chazanish argues and says you have to pay. But the svar that you wouldn't have to pay at all is, I'm just throwing this out there as a warm up to the sugya, that if you look at the window, compared to the entire house, it has almost no value. If you're selling your house for a million dollars, a half, hundred thousand dollars, and it's missing one window, okay, the price doesn't go down. So if you're gonna base it on that, the Chavetz Chaim wants a taina, that you don't have to pay at all, based on this person who wrote the Sefer. I don't understand it 100%, but there's such a spark. Anyways, we'll get there later. Now, Mars is like this. Rav said an interesting thing which also doesn't, we don't understand it. If the animal eats, the owner's potter. If the animal cushioned its fall from the fruit, then you do have to pay. So this one, no. Ella, loy me boy kom, ar tap of nun ches, no yach, om et al. Loy me boy yach, lo dem shalem is mashe en henes. Of course, if the animal eats, the zero oinus, the animal decided to eat on its own, once it got down there, the oinus was that it fell, but once it fell, who has it to eat? So of course, Rabbi will admit they have to pay. But when it cushioned its fall, so unfortunately, we have this guy working for us full time. He's not exactly aware of how things work in Shurim. So I'll just show you one picture. It's going to come out, I guess, tomorrow when the sugi is over. Here's an Ari and here's a goat. And there's a, there's a funny scene in there, I hope. Tell him to keep on working on it through the night. Maybe we'll have it for tomorrow morning. Agabar Mavriyach Ari means a lion is coming in to attack somebody else's property. 
you as a bystander jump in and help out. Shalom Aleichem, all the way from Yishulayim, Rabbi Rosen, Shalom. We saved you your seat. I'm sure you watched on the way, you know it's flying. Great. Okay. Yeah, we're live now. He, he's one of the only people that he comes to the live share and he watches me on YouTube. What's Pshat? You're reviewing on the spot with the delay, the 10 second delay. It's Givaldi. <clears throat> so, as, as, a, as a Jew, when you see your neighbor about to have damage, you see somebody fall, trip, you help them out. You help them out. Oh, I forgot to look up that joke. So it was a good one, but I, I ruined it on Friday. There's a, there's a Kyle guy, and he sees a, a woman walking with a lot of bags. She's like, it's not so it's appropriate, it's not this, that. But you know, it's a big chesed, it's a big chesed. I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw myself out there. I'm not going I'm not going to look. I'll just ask her if she needs help, and I'll, I'll help her. And he walks by, and all of a sudden he notices it's his wife. He goes, ah, Baruch Hashem, and he walks away. <laughs> okay. So, there's a mitzvah to help people, and there's a mitzvah to help if you see that there's um, a lion coming into, the, into your friend's property, so you take out your gun, you take out your stick, you chase the lion away. But you don't get paid for that. You don't get an award for that. You're doing it for the mitzvah. <laughs> but over here, you're saving your friend's animal from death or a lot of issues. You'd have to do surgery, who knows what, broken bones. <clears throat> this is the Allah of chasing away a light. And perhaps you don't have to pay for the damage. Here's another picture I see through in there. Okay. MDY shirt. Oh, massive. Okay, great. So I think you don't have to pay. He does have to pay. But it is a Mavriya Hari. It, it prevented damage from my animal. So how come you don't have, how come you have to pay for the fruit? Says the Gemara very simple. You decided on your own to go chase away the lion, so you can't demand payment. Hi, Lamedaitoi. Nobody asked the owner of the vegetables if they could use the vegetables to, to cushion the fall. You decided to take <clears throat> your neighbor's vegetables and use them for yourself. That's that's not allowed. That, that for that you have to pay. Inami, that's like Seda, right? I can't go into my friend's house and take out his gun and use bullets and say, oh, I chased away the lion. You, you have to pay for the, I have to pay for the bullets. I have to pay for whatever it is. If he goes ahead and decides to, to do it, we're talking about, the Gemara says over here, there's no loss. He just used a stick, whatever. So, okay, you know, I sleep Seda, but over here you ruin the vegetables. So, Tysis over here says, and I recommend learning this Tysis because there's a lot of cool things in it. <clears throat> One of the things is we discussed, we're not going to get into it, is if the Nazis come, Machshimam, and they say, kill you or give me your house. <clears throat> and you give the house, could you come after the war and take your house back? So it's, it's sad to hear this halacha, but the halacha is if you're trying to save your life and they have the right from their government to kill you, then you kind of lose your house. Whatever, you could look in Taisvis. But what happened by the Nazis is different. Nobody ever offered that option. They just took it. So that's different. They just, you ran and they took, so that's something else. Won't go into that one. Taisvis says that if, let's say, there's a car of Levade Hezek, in other words, the line is already in your pen with a, sh- a goat in its mouth, and you whack the, the lion and you take the goat out, then he would be chayyim. So there's a couple of stories. Maisel Shahayu, one of them happened here in Ramav and Shemesh, and it happens often. Not very often, don't worry about it, it's not. Sometimes a snake finds its way into one of the buildings. So what do you do? You call a snake, snake guy, professional snake catcher, snake catcher. So there was a Shaila. Snake catcher came, somebody called him up. And he came and he caught the snake. And then he wanted to get paid. And then each guy in the building said, no, you pay, you pay, the Varabai should pay. Who called? Me, but I called for everybody. There's a whole Shiloh over there. 
So they went to the Rav. And the Rav said something very interesting. He said, this. so one of the guys said, oh, maybe only the people that were scared of the snake should pay. I'm not scared of snakes, I don't have to pay. So the rabbi said, okay, so what you're telling me is, so if one of the ladies is screaming in her, and she's on the phone with the mother-in-law, <clears throat> mother-in-law says, why are you screaming? She says, there's a snake, a snake. So the mother-in-law also gets scared. So now the mother-in-law also has to pay because she's scared. It goes by fear. So it goes by sakana. It goes by who's in danger. So whoever's in danger has to pay. That's what he said. Another Maisa Shahaya, this is a real one that went to the Rabbanim. There's a guy that had a fire in like a multi-family house. And in order to prevent the fire from spreading, he did something to his roof. He, he got rid of the roof. He broke his roof. And he was able to save the, the building. So then he went to the neighbor. He said, listen, I broke the roof. I want you to be mishtatev in the roof. Everybody should pay. It's your roof. You did it. Who asked you? He said, but I saved you. So they brought a ride from this sugi over here that it's mavriya chari. I'm chasing away the fire where it's a vada. If I wouldn't have taken off the roof, your house would have burnt down. So on Avadi, Taisa says, I could go and take money from you. This sogyo of Mavriya Chari, you don't take money, is when it's not, not 100%. Okay. Says the Gemara of the Eva, so no, we're not holding there. Hechen How exactly did this animal fall? Rav Kahana Omar Shuhuk Laka B'meimi Ragleho. This animal went to the restroom, had Meira Glaim, and slipped on its own urine. So, on the Chaga that the, the guy just had, a lot of Hasidim, they don't learn Torah. It's called Nittelnacht. So, a Chassid in the neighborhood, the Yerushalmi guy, sent me this Dvar Torah. He said, this Dvar Torah, you could definitely learn on Nittelnacht. So, okay, I open it up. Sfar the Shurav, real, the real deal, period. He says, if anybody's worried about Kishov, I have the best dates in the world. You go into the shower, you do mera glaim into a cup, and then you pour your mera glaim on your feet nine times. You're not going to have any kishuf. It's that kind of dvar you can learn on nittel. It's not taira. It's I don't know what it is. Fine, <clears throat> mera huh? glaim, huh? It's kishuf. I don't know what it is. Rav Omar. <clears throat> so we have two ways that this animal fell from the second story over here. Let's go back. This one, yeah, okay, that was either there was a shtickle trip going on, fell, slipped, or Rav Omer, her buddy pushed her down. So man, do you have to have to have say that her, the other animal pushed her, kolchkin shuchlikob b'meiri b'meiri so certainly, if she slipped from Meiraglayim, because it's much more of a Oynas. Rashi over here says, Rosh Hashanah, so it's not a steer to this drawing, because Rashi in the Mishnah said that it's talking about both cases, even if there's a Chatzar on top of a Chatzar. And if you say that she slipped from Meiraglayim, which is a big Oynas, but he's not going to agree to the other Mandomer that says that her friend pushed her, because that's Pasha, the owner was negligent. Um shalem is mashizika, and therefore you have to pay what she damaged. Amr lay. Iboyilach aburi chada chada. You tell the owner, why are you putting two animals in the same spot where one is going to push the other one? You remember that Gemara with the, with the Kaihanim running up the, the ramp of the Mizbeach? And they're trying to get out where the one that wins the race. Well, and the guy gave an elbow, pushed him right off the ramp, and he died. Why are you putting... Why are you putting uh, animals in that situation where they're, they're pushing each other. So that's your fault. Omar Rav Kahano says, Rav Kahano Lishonu, when do you pay what you benefited from? Ella, Ba'isa Aruga, when she damaged in the exact same spot that she, here, so we have, here's the case. It's the, almost the same thing, but there's a little variation here. The animal falls and starts eating. So if the animal started to eat exactly in that spot, then Mishalem is Mashana So Rashi says why? Because that spot is a oinus. When an animal sees yummy looking vegetables right in front of it, so the animal's not gonna control itself. 
That's like an oinus. We say, we say this all the time that the, the trick is not to bring yourself into the situation of the Nisayan. Because once you're in the situation of a Nisayan, it's very, very difficult. You're almost an Aynas. No excuses, but you're almost like an Aynas where you can't control yourself. Don't get into that situation to begin with. Don't go to that place. Don't do that thing. And then you won't have a problem. So Raj said, but this animal <laughs> fell. The falling was the Aynas. And now these fruit are right in front of it, the vegetables. She's used to eating hay. And all of a sudden, the red, juicy... Tomato, so she's going to eat it. It's, that's oinus. But avol arugula aruga. But if the animal moved over a couple of feet to another patch of, of vegetables, mishalem is mashizika. That's it. It's not mashinehen, it's mashizika. Vegetable for vegetable. Rabbi Yochan argues, I feel my arugula aruga, I feel the kuloi. Rabbi Yochan argues, and that's the halacha. It doesn't matter. Once she got into the, in the situation, but b- behind us, like she fell. So even she moved over to another part of the, the garden, she started eating over there, also potter, also not potter, but mashin hennes, she has an entire day, until she leaves. Now if the owner didn't do proper shmira, she came back, then Doesn't Don't say that she left on her own, and she came back pretty much on her own, that the owner didn't watch her. One, she left the, the garden. Even if the owner put a very nice shmira, the owner is still guilty. Why? My time at Amalei. Even the alpha, once she is trained, an animal, once the animal is trained, and our children are like a shtickle like behemoth sometimes, what I mean is, like, once you get them used to one little Uncle Moishi, it's all over. It's Uncle Moishi all day long. And then you just have to up it. The Uncle Moishi is too boring. Oh, it's Disney, just Disney. It's not even PG. And then it's just PG. And then the kids are, what you train them is what you get. So if you train an animal to, to, to you just gave her tomatoes, that's it. It's tomatoes. Tell your parents, none of them, none of them, your parents don't let you watch movies. Zero, not even a komoishi? Huh? What's, what's the matzav? <laughs> pretty much, but once you treat, once you let him once, it's all over. You know that. You gotta, you can't rewind. Huh? Oh, but by the way, when, when they say every one of my friends has it, that means one kid in the class. <laughs> and then when you give in, now it becomes two. So it's like every kid in the school has it. Don't, don't believe that stuff. Mm-hmm. Start asking, who? Uh, uh, nobody. The kids, it's no one. Everyone means no one, Kemad. Not even one. <laughs> so, if here, here's another case. Similar, but not the same. Very different, actually. This one walks down normally in a ramp. Didn't fall off a, uh, didn't break the fence by mistake and fall down. So now you have to pay the damage. So this is, a, this is a question that we had before. And, and to remind you the question, we have to see this thing. Why not? He worked on it for a whole day, so you've got to show it again. Here's a case that the person was negligent. He put his animals in a, in, a, in a wall that's about to fall over. It's a rickety wall. But the animal left not because of the rickety wall, but because it dug under the wall. Yeah? So what's that? What's the, what's the case? So here also, the animal wasn't watched properly. The animal walks down a ramp. Instead of damaging the, the, the vegetables, all of a sudden the animal decides to give birth. Okay, And from the whole birth, it's a mess and it ruins the vegetables. Now if you hold that you started off on the wrong foot, but you ended off having a, a complete oinus, it was out of your, that you had no clue that she's going to give birth over there. But if you hold your chayev anyways, like the boiler, so then it's not even a question. You were negligent, you let your animal walk down there, at the end, uh, something else happened, who cares? But according to the man who says, that yes, you were negligent, but at the end, it wasn't even your fault. So you potter, my, so what about this case? 
Again, the animal went down the ramp, and that's a pshia. That's negligent. But then the animal gave birth. Me, I mean, the chlaz of pshia is potter, maybe a potter. Over here, it's considered a pshia, even the birth is a pshia. Why? The kivin, the chlaz of the kriva, the lamela, you saw that your animal's pregnant. You've been following this, this cow for nine months or whatever. How long is a cow pregnant? I don't know. Seven months. Who knows? Wasn't there once a gemara five months for goats? And I don't remember. Okay. The kivin, the chlaz of the kriva, the lamela, the boil in natura. You should have watched the animal. And be very careful with her that she shouldn't give birth anywhere. Take who? I don't know. It's one of those questions you have to wait until Mashiach. Sponsored. This is the last day of Oisai. It's the end of the year. And Jonathan Stefanski was the Nachshin. He jumped up and he sponsored the turning of the dabs to remind people that's the end of the year, chaparai, your tax benefits, whatever it is. And even if you don't have tax benefits, it's the end of the year, it's good to do it. Also, Why? I have no idea. What? I saw Goldstein is in Natchez. I want to look at the Chavora up on the screen. I say hello. It's a lovely shout. I saw Goldstein. Strong, we should put him up anyway. No, where you have, you know how to do it, Dave? I don't have sound yet from the computer, so I can't talk to him. So, but, the, but what Matt is, okay. Matt is very good at going like this. <laughs> Okay, we'll go weiter. Right it goes like this, Rabbi Isai. It's a new sugya, a very interesting sugya. When an animal does damage, animal damages, how much, how much do you pay? The animal ate 10 tomatoes, and when you go to the store, you know, you go to pomegranate and they wipe it down and they spray something on it. And it looks all shiny. That 10 tomatoes. How much does 10 tomatoes cost? $10. The animal ate 10 tomatoes. How much do you pay? You don't pay $10. It's a whole cheshben. Basically, the owner of the animal get, gets off very easy. Very easy. If he ends up paying $2, the, the, the owner of the, the field will be very lucky. What do you do? You go and you take a field. I might have, let's see if Yoshi did this thing. It's a, it's a process. It's a whole process. The bottom line is you divide it by, by 60, basically 60 times. You have to multiply what the damage was and how much, how much would a person pay for a field minus this damage. A giant, 60 times more than what it ate. At least, and we'll see exactly, just to, I'm just throwing out, it's 60. The number is 60. And we know that if you buy in bulk, you get a discount. So if it's 60 times the amount, you go based on other fields and based on that, you come up to some sort of uh, estimate and that's how much you have to pay. And it's always a lot less than what you would think and what the value on the market is. So... Take a look at this just for a second. We can go back to this. Just to give an idea. If you're looking at one field, let's say one field. How much does a field cost? $1,000. Okay, one field. If you have 60 fields, if you're buying 60 fields that are the same, one would cost $1,000. How much would they charge for 60? It's bulk. They probably charge throw it in $50,000. Instead of $60,000, instead of 60 times 1,000, but since you're buying 60, you're buying in bulk, you get $50,000. How much is each field now? Eight thirty-three. So now we're basing it off a field that's only $833. Right off the bat, you're starting with a discount. You're not even starting with a $1,000 field, you're starting with 833 Now, I'm trying to sell an $833 field to somebody that's missing 10 tomatoes. How much comes off the price? He's going to take off a buck. How much is he going to take off? That dollar, that's what you have to pay. Okay? That's, that's it. So ask the Gemara, Minani Mili, where did you come up with this? This seems uh, kind of far-fetched. Omar Rav Masnadom Akra, because it says in the Pasuk, Ubiyab is the Acher. Milamed, Shishom al Gavsa the Acher. Because the Torah says, Ubiyab is the Acher, so your appraisal goes with the other fields, nothing to do with what you ate. So you're going to ask me, where in the world did the Gemara find this in this possible? I'll ask you another question. Where in the world did the Gemara come up with 60? So Shamshi showed me on Friday. 
There's a whole thing. There's a Kabbalah that's 60. That's how it is, Kabbalah. Different Pshatim. Okay, there's a bit of Baroiv is in 60. But let's just go with a simple Pshat. Who says it? The Raivad, Rishonim. It's a Kabbalah. We know it's one, one out of 60. So if you know that, if you just go with that, that you know the Kabbalah is 60, we also know the Kabbalah that we do this whole thing. This whole thing is the Kabbalah. Now you want to know where, where do we see it in the Torah? This is all Gemara. Because how in the world the Chacham see from this little word, uh, this whole halacha? Well, they knew it from Moshe Rabbeinu. And I'm just trying to show you that because it says in the Torah, we didn't, we're not making it up now. Oh, let me ask the Chacham what, what, what posse is. Oh, uh, I think it comes from Ubir Vizdeyacher. That's not how it works. They got it from Moshe Rabbeinu, Ubir Vizdeyacher. That there's a whole way to do this. We're, we're nice to the guys that own animals. Why? Because it's hard to deal with them. They're always doing this damage. And whatever the reason is. I don't know what the reason is. This is not a guy that deliberately went and hit your car. This is, they used to have animals everywhere and animals used to go and you're, you're trying, you're schlepping this way, that way. Fine. So you do it this way. Now, as the Gemara, wait a minute. I don't know if you remember the other sugi, but we already learned. Uh, Shen and Regal don't go in Rosh Hashanah. You don't have to pay when they eat in Rosh Hashanah. Only Bizdayacher in your friend's field. So you already have a lima from there. Says the Gemara, "Mkei Nichtoi Lichtoi Rachmano Bir Bizday Chaveroi." What's this Acher business? Inami Bizdayacher. My Bizdayacher. My Bizdayacher. What's the base? Sheshamim Agav Sade Acher. Okay. So we learn that you do this the appraisal. With another field, says the Gemara, so okay, once we learn that you have to do an appraisal with another field, and we're going to talk more about it and explain better. So, how do you know the first Limud that Shem Varegel doesn't is not Chayiv in Rishus Ravim, only in the Nizik's Rishus? So, here's the Pasuk. Now, the word acher, if it's coming to tell you what field you should take payment from, so it should be in the second part of the pasuk, not in the first part. Right now, it's part of the first part of the pasuk. It should say in the pasuk, all the way to the pasuk, it should say, why is it where it is now? Why is it telling you where the damage occurred? Right? There's two things going on here. There's, where did the damage happen? We're saying it happened in the one that is damaged property, not in Rosh Hashanah. There's another thing going on. From the same pasuk we're learning, how do I evaluate how much money you have to pay? You base it on 60 fields, blah, 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 blah. That has nothing to do. That's just 60 fields, n- not owned by anyone. So th- then, we sh- then the word acher should be in that part of the pasuk. You evaluate in other fields. Why is that word acher on where the, the damage occurred? Oh, so I learned two halachas here. First of all, the damage must occur acher in the, a private domain, not in Shusha Rabbim. Second of all, you the way you evaluate it is this whole process with 60. Says Gemara How do we do this? Now, let me just explain real quickly. This idea that we, we do this thing. Okay, here's the Sunachamal. Well, we're holding here? No. So again, we're going to start with one field costs 1000 60 fields cost 50000 So you get a discount. 833 And then, did you see what just happened there? He ate a tiny piece of that little field. That's what he ate. So we're going to evaluate it based on the... A giant field, not what he ate. Hey, Ten dollars, fine. So th- there's a problem. There's a few things that could happen here. Let's say a bunch of my animals went and ate a big field. So now I have to do times sixty a large field. They ate a, not a small amount, not ten dollars. My whole ranch, a thousand animals, they got loose. They went crazy and they destroyed a field. Okay, 
It's a 10,000 feet by 10,000 feet. Now you have to do 10,000 square feet, whatever, times 60. Now, guess what? A field like that, times 60, only a gazillionaire could afford. And only gazillionaires buy it to show off. It's a show off. So the, the price is actually very, very steep. It's a very, very high price. <laughs> Le Marshall, uh, so, some people own buildings in downtown Manhattan. They own a skyscraper. You know, you know who I am? I own a skyscraper. I, it's a two cap. Oh, you guys don't know. Uh, it's, it's a terrible evaluation. It, it loses money every month. No, no, no. no. I, you know, I own, I own this in this building. It's a, it's a, it's a status thing. Okay. If somebody owns it. So sometimes you're, you're, you're buying a very large property for status, says Rashi, for gaiva. Mamish gaiva. And in Melo what? Now it's not fair to evaluate it based on a, on a status gaiva field because the guy overpaid for it. Only millionaires buy that for that kind of price. And if I'm going to evaluate on that, then I'm going to, then the, the mazik is going to lose. Mitzat there are certain fields that are very, very cheap. They're much cheaper than, than a regular field. Oh, only medium people could buy it, whatever. The poor can't afford it. The rich don't want it. So now again, once again, what do you do? It's a little bit of a dilemma. Not everything is equal. Sometimes your, your evaluation is going to come out too high, and sometimes the evaluation is going to be too low based on the type of field, that, the, the size of the field that we're, we're looking at. Says the Gemara so how do we do this? So basically, once again, we're doing two calculations. You notice the two calculations? First, we have to calculate the value of the field. Okay? Instead of being $1,000, we're dropping it to 833. So that's calculation number one. Because you're taking the field and you're doing one out of 60, the entire field. Calculation number two is how much food did the animal eat? And how much reduction do you get from selling the field without the food that that animal ate? So here's calculation number two. How much that? 10 bucks. Okay, instead of 20 bucks in the makalad, in the store it costs 20, you're only paying 10. But he's saying it on saw, on, a, on, on, a, on the size of a saw, times 60. Yani Omar, no, 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 no. Don't go so big. 60 saw field is huge, it's too big. And therefore, it's way too big for an average person and for, certainly for a per, poor person. It's only good for a wealthy person. And Mimela, the Nizik is going to lose. Um, sorry. Uh, Bikitzer, it's too big. So what we do is we go halfway. Half. It's half of this 60 saw. And Chizki Omar Kelach Bashishim Klachim. So Rabbi Yana and Rabbi Yossi are saying the same thing, just, just arguing on the, the, the size of the final field. How do we get to this field? But they both hold these two calculations. One says it's 60 saw. Uh, imagine your head, 60 uh, acres. And another says, no, you, you base it on 30 acres. Okay. But Chizki is saying something very different. He's saying you're only doing one calculation. You take the tomato that the animal ate, in 60 tomatoes. That's it. You don't do two calculations. Mesve, so you want to ask a question. And we're going to see this, this sort of question a number of times that it's not, it doesn't mention 60 anywhere. So Mesve, if, if an animal ate a whole calf or two kav, you don't say, oh, pay exactly what a calf is in the store. You base it off a small little patch of vegetables. Umishara moisa. Great. So, my love, if niatzmo, it doesn't mention a word of 60 over here. It says, you don't pay for one tomato, but you pay for a tomato and a whole patch of tomatoes. Loy, Bashishim. You must add that it's 60. Okay. Torah bottom. Ancient Kavim Nation Meshbichoi. You don't go, you don't evaluate a kav because. You're going to make it better. You're going to make it worse. My Ka'amar, what does it mean? 
If we go to 60 kav, then the mazik is going to gain. Why? Because it's, it's low. Now, just as uh, I mentioned before, Rashi says that it's gaiva to own all these um, people buy for status. Not because you actually make money in a very large uh, parcel, but because you could say. So they say about Avram ben Avram, the famous Gerd Tzedek that was in the time of the Vilna Gain. The Vilna Gain told him, I could save you if you want. And he said, no. But his father was a tremendous gvir that he owned 999 like villages. So they asked him, why don't you own a thousand? He says, no, no, no. I want people to say that he owns 999. It's very long and it seems it's important. A thousand is eh, a thousand. So again, just to, to show the gaiva that people have. And Avapike and Avram ben Avram decided to be a ger and for, forgo all that wealth. And he died al Kilish Hashem. They killed him. So, says the Gemara. So first of all, if you go low, kabashishim kabim, so, th- so then the value is very low, then the mazik is going to gain. V'leikur b'shishim kurim, and if you go to something tremendous, something similar to, like, the best I was able to come up with in our 60 city lots, like a lot in, in America, I don't know how it works in England and other places, but similar to what they have in, in Eretz Yol, also in Bnei Beit Chav, Mishkefaim, 60 lots that you can build 60 homes on. That's a very large amount, and that... It's for the wealthy. So if it's for the wealthy, then the mask is going to lose. Now we are, you're evaluating it not on real value, but on fake value that wealthy people made up. Fine. Rashi sticks in another svara here that if it's so big, then imagine a tomato, 10 tomatoes in... In a, you point to 60 mm-hmm. lots and you say, oh, there, there's missing five tomatoes from this corner. Okay, it, it comes out to zero. Zero. You want to ask a question or no? Okay. It says the Gemara, Mask of Lora Vuno, Bar Menoyach. You're telling me that you have to evaluate based on these fields. You take a one field, how much is it worth within 60 fields? And then you take this. He says, mm-hmm. So just to... If we, base core, base core is an mm-hmm. area. Core is volume. Kav, core, volume. Really should have said core over there maybe. Fine. So... What he's asking is, you have to be consistent in your language. It says, ain't shamim kav. No, kav is good over here. Uh, right? We're comparing a kav in a base kur. So you have to decide. How do you want to do this? Ain't shamim kav. It says, ain't shamim kav. You don't take a kav. Kav is a volume of food. Beshishim kav. Veloy kur, beshishim kurim. Bnei uh, where's this base core? Oh, Torah Bonin. Ain't Shom Kav Mepnei Shemesh Bichai Veloi Base Kur Mepnei Shepai Gmoy. So it starts off. Ain't Shom Kav, which is volume. Veloi Base Kur and not a base core, which is an area. So, and then we're going to explain. It means the same thing. You shouldn't go to a field that's too small or a field that's too big. But you're using the wrong word. You should say base kav, or both should be either base or both should be kur and kav. But you're using volume and, and, and area doesn't doesn't go together. So one says no. This is the pshat. So we're talking about the volume that the animal ate. The animal ate a certain volume. That's great. And oh, so don't evaluate a kav with 
just by itself because then the nizik is going to get a tremendous amount. He's going to get $10 for 10 tomatoes. That's too much. And then they'll take that volume and put it the base core and don't, don't use the volume against a tremendous area of a core, of a base core. Maybe they should probably give nizik because then the nizik is going to lose. He won't even get any money. And that's what the supposedly, I hope it's not true, that the Chavetz Chaim said that if you break somebody's window, you don't have to pay at all. Because it's so insignificant compared to the whole house. As we're going to see, it, it applies to human beings also. And the Chazanus says, what do you mean? He's not selling the house. He needs to fix his window. It's not for sale, his house. The person needs to f- sell his window. So you damage the window, pay for the, fix it. Put it back to where it was. I agree to that. I mean, who am I? But it, it doesn't make sense that the, the Chavetz Chaim would say that. It wasn't in the Chavetz Chaim. It was in the Sefer called Toldes Chavetz Chaim. Okay. I made the mistake to tell this over at my Suda last night. This thing, and the island did not like it at all. I said, it doesn't make sense. I don't blame them. Fine, so the point is the animal ate a volume, and then you don't, the Gemara is telling you, don't assess it and evaluate it based on a tremendous field, which is Shetach and area. Story. There was a person who cut down his friend's palm tree. Also, they went to the and they went to the rich goats. Now, I have to point out that in this week's parasha it says, Lo And Rashi says on the spot that it's talking about that in time when Klai is in Bavel, there's going to be Reish Golos. That's my Mashiach. They're in Bavel and the Reish Golos. And you see that the Reish Golos, and we see tomorrow's daf also, had a tremendous power over people, the police. If you didn't act exactly, you wore the wrong color shoe, they put you in jail. So they come to the Rosh Gals. This guy, Meshuggah, comes and cuts down my tree. Omalei I saw that exact tree. Utlasa, talasa, bekina, have a We have here two pictures. I want to show you what Eli Stefanski, the non artist, did. That's mine. And thank goodness we have a person by the name of Yoshi. Who does his own art ten times better? It's one person. I couldn't get the other people out of the picture. But kids are, there's three trees there. So if all three are worth shmeya zuze, so how much is one worth? Thirty-three point three. So pay him thirty-three point three. Zil lost with of Omar. So he says he didn't like that at all. This gavra. This person that his tree was cut down, he says, Gabirish What do I need a Rish Galas that, that gives me Gaisha Psakim, doesn't know the real halacha? Also, so he said, uh, I'm done with you. Also, the Kamei Rav Nachman. Dailah must know where Rav Nachman is. Who's Rav Nachman, Rav Boy? Say, not you. I know you're dying. Okay, you. Who's Rav Nachman? Very good. The Rish Galas is son in law. See, he's paying attention. <laughs> Danny, Chazara. So he goes to the Rish Gals, the son-in-law, and the Rav Nachman, he knew the Allah, HaMalei, B'Shishim. What about 60? You have to take the damage and put it into 60 palm trees. And how much is, if I'm trying to sell somebody a field of palm trees, there used to be 60, now there's 59, how much do you take off? You're not going to take off 33.3, you're going to take off $20, not $33. What are you talking about? That's Allah. When an animal goes and eats somebody else's tomatoes, great. But you, a human being, you cut down somebody's tree. You're going to get away with such a low evaluation. That's not fair. Where did you come up with this? Says Abaya to Rav. So tomorrow I'll show you what smother looks. I have a chart for it in the next staff. But basically, you go to your friend's vineyard and you, you get rid of the, the grapes that are in a stage called smodar. Okay? It means the beginning when they're really small, these grapes are tiny grapes. And you remember the, what is it called? The tropi? The, the tropit. You remember the tropit? Do they still sell that thing? <laughs> Don't tell me in the army they have it, like in Gaza, you drink tropit. It's like, it's like a triangle thing could stand up. 
and it comes with a straw, you poke it in there, and it, a tiny little straw, and you drink it. And it says, what flavor is it? It says, smadar. What? MDY kids. MDY kids. You have one in there? Oh, we might have one. Great. So it says on it, it used to say on it, smadar. Why? Because the Eid Haredes was scared that people might make Kiddush on it. If it says, bitam anavim. So they call it smadar. Smadar is a type of, uh, you got one? Here, throw it. Let's see if I can catch. Ooh. This is it. Oh, bitam anavim. Oh. It's back to Anavim. It used to be. It does have a badatz. It has badatz. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I said, I said, bitam anavim. If you say bitam anavim, they're gonna, somebody could be, might make kiddush on this, Rabbi Isai. So they used to call it smadar when I was a kid. I didn't know what smadar was, now I know. So, 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 he yofel acharim came. So you have to. How do you evaluate this? You have grapes, and we're going to go into Gevaldik and Maisa that explains this. And this is a little bit tomorrow. But you have potential. These are grapes with potential. Right now, they don't taste very good. They're nothing, but they're tiny. So what do you do? How much is a person willing to spend to to pay for this vineyard with? Tiny little grapes, and how much is he willing to spend when without these grapes? In fact, the Gemara of the like Tani. Oh, and over here it doesn't say anything about sixty. One in sixty. Now we we already learned when it comes to an animal, it also doesn't say anything about sixty. This Sanya, Katmanetia. If the animal came, and we're going to have to go over the sugya, but we'll read it just to get to the bottom and say that we did the whole almond today. If an animal comes and uproots a tree, a tiny tree, here I have a picture, that's mine. This is my little piece, Erev Shabbos, and if you want to see what Yoshi did, uh, uh, mine might be better, I don't know. <laughs> what? You like his better? Of course. Of course. <sighs> You guys are not nice. You guys are not nice, really. Arab Shabbos, running to Shir. No, love Africa. You never heard of Shir. It's unbelievable. Says Gemara, Rabbi Yosi Oimer, Goizer Exeris Shibushalayim Oimrim, Netia Bashnasa Shtei Kesef. You have to pay two for a small tree. Bash Shtei Shonim Arba Kesef. It depends how old it is. Every two years, every year it goes up two Kesef. Ach Lachaz is, if it ate wheat that only grew a third. This is a basically we're going to be dealing with him tomorrow. Very interesting. We look at what it's worth when it's completely done. This wheat, the animal ate a third. Let's wait for its complete potential. That's full size. How much is it worth, going to be worth then? That's what you have to pay today. Now, what's interesting is We'll see that there's a shita, Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yonaisa Kilo in Anavim Magdais, Mamsh the same shita, and it's not the same shita. That according to Rabbi Yonaisa Aglili, if everything gets ruined at the end, you hear? L- listen to this. The animal ate tfua that's worth a third. A third, third price. But no, so there's reason no, it could grow to the whole thing, you have to pay 100%. But what if locusts came and ate everything to the core, nothing? Says Rabbi Yisrael, you don't have to pay anything. You have this chiddush. We go to the, at the end. If the rest of the wheat in this field would make it to the end, so you just ruined it for the guy. The guy could have had a nice kishmak of wheat all at the end. But what if locusts came and ate everything up? So you would have zero at the end. So now you get zero. So we'll wait until until it grows, and then we'll decide how much you have to pay. <laughs> We look right now. How much is it worth today, this field with the damage that the animal caused? That's what we would think today. In our society, we probably did something we do it. I had a field. It was worth $1,000. The animal came in, ate a whole bunch. Now it's worth nine fifty. Give me 50 bucks. Okay, so I guess we'll just go over this tomorrow because it's in the middle of a sugya. The whole raya ends later. 
Rabbi Sai, have a wonderful evening. Yishkoi for coming. And tomorrow at 7.15, the Hebrew Shir at 9 p.m. throughout the week. Yeshar Koyach.